Welcome, welcome to a Malcolm X Movement event on Palestine. Thank you for everyone for attending. Uh, my name is Didan Kimati this evening, and uh, Didan Kimati was a comrade of my paternal grandfather um, in Kenya. Hands up, anyone who knows who Didan Kimati is? Okay, just one or two people. Didan Kamati was the leader of the most infamous and effective revolutionary anti-colonial movement of its time in the late 1950s, through the 50s basically. He's the leader of what the British called the Mau Mau in Kenya, uh, which the Kenyans called the Land and Freedom Party, which was the main force of the resistance against the British colonialists in Kenya. So it's a salutation not only to my own family tradition of fighting the British, but also to give respect to the general African resistance in the context of Kenya. Malcolm X, we're named after Malcolm X, the Malcolm X movement. Malcolm X called, uh, he said, that we all should be developing the Mau Mau organization resistance wherever we are against white supremacy and colonialism. So it's a kind of a reference to that. And the way that feeds into Palestine, who created Israel? Right, the British. British are world leaders at colonial partitions. You, you, you look anywhere on any continent, there's a partition of that land conducted by the British primarily. And they are the masters, and they are the people who give birth mo mo most, most generally in the world than any other colonial entity to white colonial settler entities like the state of Israel, Canada, USA, New Zealand, Australia, uh, uh, and the, the, the same project in Ireland with the occupied six counties of the north, etc., etc., etc. So just a few references that to tie things together, because that's what the Malcolm X movement really is all about. It's maximum unity against white supremacy and colonialism, and as we're resident on this godforsaken, cold, windswept island of lovely Brexit Britain, we very much consider it a primary duty to target and fight back uh, the British state, especially because they are one of the leading uh, state, colonial states in the world for the last half millennia or so. So anyway, so, so the Malcolm X movement is involved practically in two main things, the same strategy, local grassroots work in West London, in East Oxford, um, even in Bristol, we have a presence in other parts of London. So it's a radical grassroots organizing. We are not a membership organization. We do not recruit members. That's not what we do. We are a circle of people, some are known and some are not known. And our work is about relationship building in a radical way at the grassroots, between individuals and between circles of people and between organizations. So that's how, that's how we uh, uh, function. We, are, we seek to learn and apply the revolutionary lessons of movements and people like the Black Panther Party in the USA, with whose leadership we have direct relations and work with directly frequently since our founding uh, 10 years ago in 2014, 2015. You can check out our stuff on YouTube, we have a blog, we have a presence on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, etc. We follow in the tradition of Claudia Jones, and her close comrade in arms, Manchanda. Cla Claudia Jones was from Trinidad, an anti-colonial communist revolutionary who was chucked out of Trinidad into New York um, and then chucked out of New York by the anti-communist, anti uh, um, pro-colonial witch hunt of the McCarthyite era and she ended up in London here in the late 50s and she organized particularly in the, Na uh, the Napa Grove area. And so we kind of follow on and we're inspired by her work and her analysis and her grassroots activism and her anti-colonial work. We are also inspired by people like Walter Rodney, who is a revolutionary from Guyana, who had a particular impact in Tanzania and particularly in Jamaica as well. And we work directly with these intergenerational communities. These are not just people in the past that we admire and we posture around. We're very serious in our work. We're very serious in making these connections. And around that, we work with the revolutionary communities from the Caribbean and from Guyana, etc. And we were central to setting up the Jessica Huntley Community Garden in that regard. Jessica and Eric Huntley, Jessica is past, Eric, Eric is still alive. They are revolutionaries against the British colonialists in the context of uh, Guyana. 
Tonight, we'll, we'll see how the chat goes um, before, we go, uh, before we go to eating. So let's see how it goes, hour and quarter, hour and a half. We'll see what the atmosphere is and your engagement. And in that, we do not agree with the special panelist expert speakers, and you are just the kind of attendees. Similarly, I don't agree in the music culture that there's DJs and MCs and singers, and the people who pay money to see them are just the punters or the ravers. We do not believe in these hierarchies. So we have a model where we're going to start with you first, not the speakers, for about 5, 10, 15 uh, minutes. So that's how we open up now all our events. We start with the grassroots. Welcome, welcome, come in. Don't stand there in the dark, <laughs> looking like you don't belong. Hi. Come yeah, into yeah. the room, Hi. brother. Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> From West London to Oxford yeah. in one day. Two delegations. <laughs> uh, West Ealing is a center of Somali and Middle Eastern weddings. We have some famous wedding venues. And some of our comrades went there today. Uh, and I saw them there. Anyway, sorry. So anyway, so in the spirit of non-hierarchy, grassroots unity and collectivity, we want to open up from you first. And I um, hope you feel comfortable. I know it's a bit app, but just relax. We're all just comrades here. We're all just working class people here. You know, welcome Nigel, do you want to step in? I know all the seats are packed. Maybe you can stand on the back or... Yeah, we can stand. Yeah, we can stand. Yeah. stand on the seat. The... They want to be the bad boy standing at the back, but... No, no, no. There's time to go gone. Not you anymore, come on. There are some in that room. And in all of our work... Sorry, Jabi, okay. In all of our work, similarly to this moment, we prioritise oppressed communities. And especially around that, we prioritise uh, the younger member of um, oppressed uh, communities. Um, and so in that, we would like to encourage you know, people of colour, the young people, women, gay people, people with accessibility challenges, etc. So the things we want to talk about in general in the conversation today, and I'll be asking you to, to talk to these points or to any other points that you want to talk about. And these are the following. These are the themes that we're inviting you to comment on that we're going to discuss together. Reflecting on the state of the Palestine protest movement. Sorry. Can you click on chairs there? Do you want to just move to that way? And yeah, right back that way. So. Right up against the wall, as it were. And uh, that's... Sorry, I'm just going to shift these around so we can accommodate. Thanks. Thank you. Are you okay there? Yes. Are you sure that my signal is here? Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And Dan reminded me, I've mentioned it already, but just on record. Thank you, Comrade Jabu, for the space. Uh, um, next person comes in. <laughs> yeah. it's, really, it's really kind that Jabu supported us because it was a bit of a challenge. As you probably all know, anyone involved in Palestine activism at the moment, the repression is high, the fear is high, the intimidation is peaking, the racism is crazy. What's happened this last six weeks? But we can talk more about that. So we want you to we want to talk together on this, and I'm going to invite you immediately just after this, reflecting on the state of the Palestine protest movement. Do, we, do you agree that the protest leaders that conceded to the bans on Palestine protest outside the Israeli embassy at High Street Kensington, they conceded that ban? Are you satisfied with that? No. Is that the right decision to make? No. Are you satisfied with the fact that the protest leaders in inverted commas leaders, conceded the ban on November the 11th that we could not march in Whitehall and Downing Street, where we were marching every week, and then suddenly Tommy Robinson and his gang wanted to march there, and we were pushed away, and the protest organizers conceded that. How do you feel about that? Do you agree to that? How do we reflect upon the extent of racist and uh, police and state racist repression and demonization? 
Is it acceptable to you, and how do you feel, that protest organisers have sought protection from the police, particularly on the November the 11th London demonstration, that they openly encouraged protection from the police to defend ourselves against the violent racists who were mobilised onto the streets by the government and by the police itself. Don't get it twisted. The police facilitate the far right on November the 11th. Whatever spat they had with Suella Braverman is kind of not relevant. The police are the constant oppressive state arm. So are you happy that the protest organisers did not organise any self-defence stewarding on the protest, and that the far right came right up to our protest and harassed, abused, intimidated, and attacked men, women, and children on our protest movement? Are the police our protectors? Have we forgotten about the Casey report? Have we forgotten about Sarah Everard? And that what we consider the police to be the gang of Wayne Cousins, they are raping, they are raping and killing every day. Can someone get the door, please? Thanks. Um, is that acceptable to you? Do you feel comfortable going onto a protest knowing that the racists are going to attack and protest organizers are saying the police will protect you, don't organize self-defense? Are you, are you okay with that? And then thinking about the challenges, especially of unity for Palestine, against white supremacy, colonialism. And to that, do you feel there's been an anti-colonial leadership this last six weeks in the protest movement? Do you feel that, oh yeah, that's the group, or that's the people who give a clear anti-colonial advocacy around what we're going through here in Palestine solidarity and what's going on in Palestine and the region? And what do you feel about the extent to or the challenges of the unity particularly between Asian and African heritage people, between Asian, Arab, Middle Eastern people and African heritage, African Caribbean heritage people. Are you content with the level of unity? Do you think there needs to be more? And what does that look like? So, so these are some of the themes um, I want you guys to kind of speak on. So who would like to come?